Hey everybody, John Houlihan here. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, I'm planning to do a new series of videos called Great Guitar Tone. And the idea behind these videos is to, on each one, choose one song that has a really signature guitar riff or guitar tone and try to replicate that tone as accurately as possible uh, using the equipment that I have. So not necessarily the equipment they actually used when recording it. Um, and then that way you guys can at least have a go at trying to get close to the tone. So uh, this isn't a guitar lesson video by any means. I mean, I am going to play the song as accurately as I can, uh, but it's not a guitar lesson. There's lots of channels out there that have lessons. It's uh, basically to try to show you in detail how to replicate a certain guitar tone using, you know, for example, I have a Stratocaster, I have an Epiphone ES335 and a Blues Junior. Uh, and basically using that type of equipment, try to replicate uh, these tones as well as possible. So um, the first song that I'm going to do in the next segment is uh, a song called Day Tripper by the Beatles, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. So um, I hope you're going to subscribe. I hope you like this new series called Great Guitar Tone. And uh, we're going to give it a shot with Day Tripper. Okay, so for the first song I chose uh, in this series, Great Guitar Tone, um, is a song that probably almost all of you will know. It's a song called Day Tripper by The Beatles. It was recorded on October 16th, 1965 at EMI Studios, now known as Abbey Road Studios. The um, song was written by John Lennon and Paul McCartney and produced by uh, George Martin, their famous producer, sometimes known as the fifth Beatle. Um, now this has a very recognizable uh, riff in this song, Day Tripper. We're going to try to reproduce it um, using this ES335 and this Blues Junior. I'm going to go over the equipment. Uh, the In the next segment I'm going to talk more specifically about the equipment, but um, it's quite likely that when the Beatles recorded it they used a Gibson ES-345 and they used a Vox AC-30. Um, but I'll talk more about the equipment specifics in the next segment. So, first installment of Great Guitar Tone, we're going to do Day Tripper by the Beatles. Okay, so let's go over uh, the equipment that we're going to use in this edition of Great Guitar Tone. Uh, we're going to try to reproduce the, the tone of the very famous riff used in the Beatles song, uh, Day Tripper. Now the Beatles um, probably used a Vox AC-30 to record this song. It would have been about a 1965-ish uh, era Vox AC-30. I don't have one of those, so we're going to use my Fender Blues Junior. Now, these are obviously, you know, different amps, but they do have some things in common. Uh, I, I looked at the, the uh, circuitry, the basic tube architecture of the two amps, and there's actually kind of similar. The Vox AC30 uh, uses 12AX7 preamp tubes and it uses EL84 output tubes. Uh, my Fender Blues Junior here also uses 12AX7 preamp tubes and EL84 output tubes. My Blues Junior has two output tubes and produces 15 watts. The Vox AC30 had four EL84s and its output was doubled to 30 watts. Also, uh, this particular, this is a limited edition uh, Blues Junior and it has a um, Jensen P12Q speaker with uh, an Alnico magnet. It's a nice speaker, it's pretty bright, but it's a, it's a good speaker. Uh, the Vox AC30 that the Beatles used probably had a, a Celestian with an Alnico magnet. And by the way, Alnico is an acronym that stands for Aluminum Nickel Cobalt. Uh, that's the special alloy they used in the in the speaker magnet. All right, so the microphone we're going to use uh, for recording this is a, a Shure SM57 dynamic microphone. Uh, we're going to have it placed close to the speaker, about midway be between the center of the speaker axis and the edge of the speaker. Uh, I'm going to post a link in the upper right hand corner. I made another video about how to record your guitar amp so you can get more detail on that. Um, so this is the 
the setup we're going to use when the Beatles originally recorded it at, at EMI Studios, which is now Abbey Road Studios. I really don't know what kind of microphone they used, but this is a very common one and it's um, it's pretty inexpensive. So this is what we're going to go with for this uh, for this demo. Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, settings we're going to use on our Blues Junior to try to replicate the sound on the Day Tripper uh, guitar riff. So this is a master volume amp. You got your master volume here. So we're going to set the volume at seven, uh, and that's basically how hard we're going to drive the preamp tubes, the 12 AX7s. So they're going to be on the verge of breakup. Fat switch is off. That means it's in the out position. Uh, treble treble is down at four. It's quite a bright amp, so we can uh, roll off the treble a bit. Bass is down at three, don't need a lot of bass for this. Mids are at four, same as the treble. Master volume, uh, we're gonna have at three. So the master volume is an indication of how hard we're gonna drive the output tubes, the two EL84s, and we're not gonna drive them too hard, so most of the, most of the overdrive we get will be from the preamp tubes, which are set at seven. Uh, and also three is a pretty reasonable sound level, it's not like screaming loud. Reverb is uh, one, um, which is basically off. That's the settings we're going to use on the uh, on our Blues Junior. Okay, so now let's have a look at the uh, the effects pedals. What settings we're going to use there? Uh, we have a Boss CS2 uh, compression sustainer. The level is set at the 12 o'clock position. Sustain also set at the 12 o'clock position. And the attack knob in the middle is um, set to about the three o'clock position. Uh, I use the compressor a lot. I, I use it as an always-on pedal. It smooths out the dynamics of your playing, and I just I just think it really uh, really sounds good. So I generally have the compressor on all the time. The only other pedal that we're going to use for this one is the Boss BD2 Blues Driver. Um, you can see the level knob is at the 12 o'clock position. Gain is way down at about, you know, uh, 7 or 8 o'clock, so we're just using a little bit of gain. And the tone, in the, the middle knob, the tone knob is rolled off to about 11 o'clock. Again, this is quite a bright amp, so I've got that rolled off a little bit. The other thing about these, um, a pedal like the Blues Driver, or the Tube Screamer, which we're not using, just the Blues Driver, is that they also act as a high-pass filter, meaning that they filter out some of the, the bottom end tone that you really don't need uh, on a guitar in general. So that's just another another thing. Uh, so they're not always just used for for adding overdrive. It, it, it's really kind of a, a high-pass filter. It rolls off the low, the low end. Okay, so that's this. That's the effects we're going to use. The only other one is a uh, a Boss NS2 noise suppressor, but that has no effect on the tone. That's just a, a noise gate. Okay, as far as the guitar that we're going to use um, for simulating the tone, we're going to use an Epiphone uh, dot guitar. You can see the dot. It's named. It gets that name from from the dot fingerboard inlays. Uh, the Beatles. As far as the research I did, they were using a Gibson ES345, which is a kind of a fancier version of a Gibson ES335. And this Epiphone dot is basically a cheaper duplicate of a Gibson ES335. You know, one of these costs, or the, the Gibson ES335 costs about as five times as much as this guitar. And you know it's probably somewhat better, but I don't think it's hugely better. And in keeping with you know what we want to do on this channel, we want to try to keep the cost down for musicians. So I'm not going to run out and buy a four thousand dollar guitar and a two thousand dollar Vox amp. We're going to use what we have here to try to uh, get the get the tone you know ninety percent of the way there. So we're using this Epiphone ES three thirty five copy. And um, it has Alnico pole pieces in the in the pickups. They're humbucker pickups, and we're going to be using the 
the bridge position. Day Tripper by the Beatles. So that's basically how the riff goes. Um, hopefully it sounded pretty close. Uh, I noticed when listening to this song through headphones to the original recording that they somehow doubled the guitar. I don't know whether they had um, George Harrison or John Lennon actually uh, play a second guitar or if they somehow delayed it. But what I'm going to do in the next segment is I'm going to... Uh, play it back which is mono with one guitar and then I'm going to double the guitar and have a sort of a right to left delay of about 40 milliseconds which kind of sounds like what they did on the on the actual recording and you guys can check that out and see how that sounds. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for the first video in the series Great Guitar Tone. We did Day Tripper by the Beatles. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, maybe give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. And leave your comments what you thought of the, what you thought of the video, whether you thought we matched the tone pretty closely, uh, how I could have done better. And we'll see you next time.